The movie Jurassic Park is a science fiction thriller. Scientists cloning dinosaur DNA and creating modern day monsters. But this paleontologist at North Carolina State University is the first person to discover what may be real dinosaur DNA. Mary Schweitzer received fossils from the badlands of Montana of a 68 million year old Tyrannosaurus rex. When she looked at a section of thigh bone, she was stunned. It looked like a female T-Rex, and none had ever been found before. And it wasn't just any female, it appeared to be pregnant. How could she tell? Because pregnant dinosaurs, like their cousins' birds, are believed to develop special tissue that helps build their eggs. That tissue was present on this T-Rex. So I picked up this piece, I looked at it, and I said, it's a girl, and it's pregnant. Little did Schweitzer know that discovery would pale in comparison to what she would eventually stumble upon, the world's first fossil soft tissue ever. That would be earth shattering because no one believes soft tissue could survive over millions of years. So no one, including Schweitzer, even bothered looking for it. Thinking like everyone else, there's no organics present in dinosaur bone. All Schweitzer wanted to do was etch away the minerals around that fossil tissue to confirm her pregnancy diagnosis. She told her lab assistant to put it in an acid solution for a very short time. I don't want to dissolve it all the way, let's just etch it. Well, it, it got left in the solution too long, and when my technician went to pick it up, it went meow, meow. So it was a mistake. Absolutely. Here's what she found, tissue that was soft and stretchy, not a hardened fossil. She also found translucent blood vessels that looked just like ones from a modern ostrich. Schweitzer couldn't believe her eyes. I, I was scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> I had goosebumps and I told my tech, I said, this, this isn't real, this can't happen. Do it again. We did it, I think, 17 times before I was ready to go public <laughs> with it, yeah. She published her findings in Science Magazine and once word got around, it ignited a firestorm with young Earth proponents saying it proved dinosaurs weren't old after all. Skeptical scientists said it can't be soft tissue because there's no way it can survive that long. If everybody who's a heck of a lot smarter than me says this can't last, why is it there? So Schweitzer started digging some more, and once again, another brilliant accident happened. She attended a lecture on Alzheimer's disease and heard that those with Alzheimer's have more iron in their brain than normal people. Iron wreaks havoc on brains by tying proteins up in knots and cutting off brain connections. In fact, it acts the way formaldehyde does to prevent tissue from being eroded. If iron can trigger proteins forming knots in living beings, maybe it can act the same way in our fossils. Blood is rich in iron. So she took blood vessels from ostrich and chicken bones and soaked them in bird blood or hemoglobin. She soaked others in water. Then she waited a while and compared them. Most of the vessels that were not treated with hemoglobin were just disintegrating after about three days. The ones that we had soaked in hemoglobin are still sitting in the lab at room temperature. Nothing's happened. She believes once the dinosaur died, the iron in its blood was released and locked up that soft tissue. As the animal turned into fossil, it became encased in stone and remained undisturbed for millions of years. She and her team ran more chemical tests on that tissue and came up with a hint of Jurassic Park, a trace of possible dinosaur DNA. We were able to uh, show that there's something inside those cells that's chemically consistent with DNA. It reacts to DNA stains and it reacts to anti-DNA antibodies the same way modern cells do, only greatly reduced in abundance. So, Is it DNA? Don't know. And you know, can even, you find out if it is? DNA? Yeah, even if it is DNA, though, if you can't sequence it, it really doesn't have much value. That's because you would need all the DNA chromosomes to clone a T-Rex, and nobody even knows how many they had. And what would you clone it in? An ostrich? There's so many barriers to it that I just don't think. I'm not going to say never <laughs> because technology changes rapidly, but I think it's highly unlikely. So highly unlikely, we're going to have a real Jurassic Park. Highly unlikely. 
But her stunning findings have launched a manhunt for more soft tissue in existing fossils. She's already found several other examples and believes we could help modern animals by understanding how ancient ones adapted to their environments. She hopes one day to find a completely intact T. rex fossil. But even if she doesn't, she's already found more than most scientists could ever dream of. She laughs that it came as the result of a mistake, which proves the old adage it's better to be lucky than good. But she's also proved with hard work and dedication in the face of adversity, the other half of that saying, you've got to be good to know when you're lucky. So many great scientific discoveries have come about exactly that way. It's my whole life. <laughs>